You're listening to Sibling Talk, commentary from a progressive point of view. Now here are your hosts, John Paulette and Mary Jo Tumer. Hello, I'm John Paulette. And I'm Mary Jo Tumer. Mary, do you remember this? I could walk out on Fifth <laughs> Avenue and shoot someone, and I wouldn't lose a vote. Remember that? Was it Fifth Avenue or Broadway? No, I think so, it was Fifth Avenue. And Fifth. also, but he didn't say, but I wouldn't go to jail. No, because I would tell him right now, you might not lose a vote. You you may be right about that, but you could still damn well be indicted, pal. Yeah, so it's so funny. Um, and for anybody who's been living under a rock for the last six years, um, Trump, that we are talking about Donald Trump, and he said that during the 2016 campaign. Um, and, you know, I think it's right. I, I think yesterday we got some reporting finally that the grand jury impaneled by the Department of Justice is asking questions about Donald Trump and not from the insurrectionist. He's asking questions to people like Mark Short. And for anyone who doesn't remember, that's Pence's chief of staff. So that's pretty, pretty close to the president. He's the kind of guy to quote another Broadway musical who would have been in the room where it happens, <laughs> the room where it happens, right? Mark Short was absolutely right in the middle of everything. Absolutely. And he was the one, you know, advising and helping Pence through that very difficult time when Trump is putting pressure on him to uh, throw the election to Trump. And Mark... Uh, Mark Short was a very important witness before the January 6th committee. The other thing is I heard, um, I don't remember what this reporter's name is, but he is like the definitive reporter on Pence. And we've heard this before that Pence runs a very tight ship. You don't get leaks out of Pence world and nothing that Mark Short does, he does before checking with Pence. So Pence has given him the okay to tell the story. Not that he have a choice if he's subpoenaed, um, but there, he's, not, he's not fought any of the subpoenas either, John. No, no. Pence certainly has said, be cooperative. Do, yeah. do the right thing in, in the uh, hearing. And I, I mean, we have to put that together. You know, it was funny. The way uh, the news media found out that Pence... And I believe uh, the council's name was Bruce Jacobs, if I if I have the name right. Yeah. The two of them were seen uh, going into the grand jury, but kind of accidentally. NBC had set up their cameras to cover the Steve Bannon trial. And they're there taking pictures. And who walks by but Mark Short and... Uh, and Jacobs, Jacobs. Yeah. and so the, an astute camera person says to his producer, you got any idea who those guys are? It seems like I've seen them uh, before. And that kind of thing just like unraveled right away. So we had that and then put that together with a couple of other things, emails being released uh, that have been in the hands of the Justice Department since April. But I think maybe most significantly, Merrick Garland, who, by the way, I might point out, is my partner Pam's high school classmate. He was the valedictorian uh, of the high school. Just a little personal note. But he appears uh, last night with Lester Holt. Lester asks in a lot of different ways, can you indict uh, a former president or a presidential candidate? To which Merrick Garland, no matter how many times you ask him, said, no one is above the law. Yeah. Do you get it, Lester? Yeah. How many other ways do I have to say something without saying it? So yesterday was the first time that I thought, hmm, you know, Trump may not get away with this. Because even though I think many people feel like he needs to be held accountable, he's just such a slippery guy. And he seems to get away with things again and again and again. 
but he may have met his match in Merrick Garland, which is just one of the great ironies of history. Absolutely. The other thing to go back to the Pence piece, um, maybe we've talked about this a little bit, but it is so interesting, John, to watch Pence thread this needle. So he spoke this week, as did Trump. And Pence is like, hey, listen, I was part of the Trump administration. A lot of great things happen, but we just have a different, I think they use the word focus. And he's saying, my focus is I'm going to look forward, and the other guy keeps looking backwards. So he doesn't want to come out against Trump, and I think he's right that that's politically dangerous for him. But he does need to to continue to do the right thing. So he's letting his people go in to testify. Um, not that they have a choice again, as I said earlier, but they could they could raise some, you know, uh, we have privilege, it's executive privilege, something like that. They could at least delay it. And that's not happening. What's yeah. interesting to me about that at the end of the day is, will that strategy work for Pence? Because do you know, and I, I, or of course you do, this is the way I think about it. Pence holds Trump's fate in his hands. And does Trump know that? I guess that's the question. Because if Pence decides, listen, I'm going to, to call Merrick Garland and say, I want to testify. Trump is yeah. a dead man. He is a dead man. And I, I mean, I agree with you. He's walking a fine line. I think he's being a little confrontational. This may be a coincidence, maybe, but I don't think so. We have had two occasions, one in Arizona and yesterday in Washington, D.C., where Mr. Pence has chosen to give a speech in the same city on the same day as Donald Trump, creating a split screen twice. Did does that yeah. kind of thing just happen? I I really feel like Mike Pence himself or one of his handlers said, we are going to draw a real distinction between us and Donald Trump. We're going to go into cities. We're going to talk about the future. We're going to talk about Republican philosophy and let people hear us do that while Donald is still talking about the last election. Yeah, that's so interesting, John. And you know, when you think about Pence, I think what we've learned about him is he's very disciplined. What we thought about him is he's just a sycophant, right? But his view and and his wife's view, Karen, who he calls mother, which is weird, but anyway, is that God has destined him to be the president of the United States. And I think back, and I know we've talked about this before, that initially his wife did not think that he should run with Trump, that he was such a disgusting human being that it would um, that it would ruin Pence's brand because he's a very religious guy. He's the guy of the religious right. But maybe Pence was right that he could run and be with Trump and be loyal to Trump, but at the moment where Trump had gone too far, he had to step back. And that's what's happened. And now he's running very disciplined post-vice presidency where he's not said anything bad about Trump, but he has. And he's and his people have gone out and said, you know, the, pre, uh, the vice president did the right thing. And you remember when Cipollone was testimony, testifying and he said to the committee, I think Pence should get the Medal of Honor. So it's now it's the deification of Pence in that sec, that religious right segment of the Republican Party. And don't be so surprised if Pence is really a contender for the nomination. People say he doesn't have a prayer. I don't agree with that. No, I don't agree with it either, because I think it is totally possible that he gets embraced by kind of the moderate, the old style, uh, you know, call it what you want. The Bush Romney wing could look at him and say, "Okay, this is a guy we could we could live with." He certainly is going to get the religious right. The religious right by itself cannot get you elected president, 
But if you're a Republican, it's hard to do it without the religious right. right. You, you've got to get that uh, that part there. So that might make sense. Mike Pence has huge, massive name recognition. And I mean, to use a very Trump-like kind of view of it, he has a really strong brand. And his brand is, okay, he was quiet. We didn't hear a lot from him. But when he counted, he stood up. It's the Medal of Honor kind of brand. Now, that's not a brand, bad brand to live with. It's not what everybody wants. You know, the Trump followers, what they want is he's a fighter, he's a scra scraper, and he was sent here by God. That's what, what they mm -hmm. want out of, out of Donald Trump. So that may be the right situation. In particular, if, as we suspect, the Republicans say, we're as tired of Donald Trump as you guys were of Bill Clinton. Right. That is a great point, John. Yeah, I I just think, you know, people are like, oh, it's going to be DeSantis. It's gonna be... Nope, I don't believe it. And so yesterday when I was thinking about Pence and how disciplined their team is, thought it could be him. Because all those people that are testifying against Trump right now, all the Cipollonis, uh, all those guys, they'll be on Team Pence for sure. For sure. Well, it, and I want to add one more thing into this. What we're hearing out of people who do polling and focus groups is that many Republicans, many Trump supporters are saying, yeah, we don't like what Trump did. We're tired of Trump. But those four years were not bad years. In their view, there were policies. I mean, you and I don't quite see what they were. But there were policies, there was an approach to, uh, to governing the country that they liked. They just are embarrassed about the rest of this. What happens if the guy that you have the chance to vote for was the vice president? Can you then make the case, listen, my name is Mike Pence. I'm everything you liked about the Trump-Pence years without the crap you didn't like. I know. I and mean, he's a moral guy and, you know, he does the right thing. I agree. That's so interesting. So fast. I know that's not what we planned on talking about today. But as soon as we started talking about those guys testifying against Trump, this is where my mind goes, because Trump is losing what they call it, the Trump slump, which I love every single day, every single time one of these things comes out. And it's dumb stuff. Like um, Trump was saying, oh, I called the National Guard. And everyone knows that's a lie. Yeah. Well, he uh, lied all the time. But why are you lying about that? Why yeah. do you bother to lie about that? No, it's absolutely crazy. And I do want to clarify one thing in case anybody misinterprets me. There is no way in hell that I will ever vote for Mike Pence. Oh, me neither. And you know who his vice president will be? Liz Cheney, who yeah. I will happily vote against as well. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and and actually, it's so funny you say that because I was daydreaming before because when I drive around the car, I daydream about what the Republican ticket might be in 2024. <laughs> it, it shows you just how little I have to do with my life. And there, but I thought the same thing. I thought, wait a minute, then we can really embrace uh, the get rid of Trump. And here's a little farther where my mind went. Let's assume Trump gets indicted and perhaps even convicted. And the Republicans want to say, Man, that was not our guy. We're far away from it. How do you do that? Put Liz Cheney on the ticket. I agree. That is so funny, John. I mean, that's when they turn and then it's like, Trump? Trump who? You know, yeah. like they always do with Nixon. Like, nobody voted for Nixon. No one will have voted for Trump. Absolutely. <laughs> we just we just pooped Donald out of our system. We called it, <laughs> the, wait for it, the Trump dump. Oh, my uh, uh, <laughs> Oh my God! You need to do that. Get a um, you know website for that today, John. Absolutely. Oh my God, the Trump Ab dump. That is awesome. Absolutely. Well, you know, we have a lot. Of, we we have a lot of time in the future to talk about you know indictments and committee hearings and all that. 
um, it, it will never cease to entertain us. Never, ever, ever. All right. You have a great day. You too. Bye. Sibling Talk is a JMP production. Theme song by David Paulette.